So growing plants in jars with their roots suspended in water is known as the Kratky method. If this is done properly, it's not only the easiest way to grow things hydroponically, but I believe it's the easiest way to grow anything, period. So let's get started. All right, so this is the jar that I will be using. I bought this pickle jar, honestly, not for the pickles, although I did eat them all. Uh, I bought this jar because look at this jar. Isn't it beautiful? So the thing I really love about the Cracky Method is it's that full passive, set it and forget it, single use garden. The idea is that you have the appropriate size container for the nutrients to leave at a similar rate to which your roots grow. So by the time the plant is ready to harvest, the water and the nutrients are mostly gone. Then you harvest the plants, ditch the roots, and do it all over again. But before we can put roots in water, there are a few things you're gonna need. These things are crucial to measure the integrity of your water. You're most definitely going to need a pH tester and a PPM meter. Now, both of these are across the board used to measure water integrity from like drinking water to your swimming pool. So you can actually find both of these things in like pet stores, hardware stores, um, pool stores. So a pH tester is gonna measure the acidity to the base and let you know where your water falls. I'll include a list in the description box of a bunch of different veggies and their preferred pHs. pH levels, pHs. But the PPM meter is a device that measures the parts per million in your water. It's the only way you're really gonna be able to tell how many nutrients are in your water. Now for the Cracky method, I would recommend a PPM of anywhere between 800 and 1500, depending on the type of plant you're trying to grow. So these are also tools that you're gonna use in every other hydroponic garden that you make. So really it's just considered an investment into yourself as a hydro farmer. Welcome. All right, so when we fill up the water, we wanna take it to about four centimeters below where the cup is gonna set. This is because the very top of the roots aren't supposed to be submerged in water, they're actually supposed to be in air. And then let's put our nutrients in. It's important to make sure you put your nutrients in before you measure your pH. That should go without saying, but yeah. All right, so now let's check my pH. So I'm using clay pebbles as my median and they're just uh, in a two inch basket, which is hanging in the top. Okay, so here's where we have to talk compromises. Would you rather have your plant have really healthy roots, have no chance of getting algae, um, grow to its maximum potential, or do you wanna see your roots grow and make your jar garden something that looks really cool in your kitchen or your RV garden? So I've decided to go with form over function, but I'm not just gonna throw it under a grow light and hope for the best. So let's talk algae. It suffocates your roots and it will kill the cracky setup in a heartbeat. The one thing you need to do to prevent algae, the one thing you need to do to prevent algae, and kind of the only thing you can do to prevent algae, is to block sunlight. If algae doesn't have that light, algae can't thrive. This is why you'll see a lot of people who are really serious cracky growers either paint their jars or wrap them in tape to keep sunlight from getting in. But if you're like me and you just wanna see the roots, then here are a couple things that you can do to prevent algae from developing in your cracky setup. Number one, if you have a setup like me and you plan to use a grow light overhead, then you can make a little sun visor to go around the top of your cracky setup. Uh, I just used a bamboo plate and drilled a hole in it and then just set it right on top of my garden and uh, my light is directly above it so it acts as a nice little sunshade. It's not foolproof, but you know what? It definitely helps quite a bit. Number two. If you have your plant in front of a window, like a lot of people do, like in your kitchen or in your office or something, and you want it to grow using natural light, one thing that you can do to just kind of block light from one side is uh, get some, some construction paper and just cut it to cover the back side, and then you'll still be able to see the roots from the front. Jars are 
fairly inexpensive and seeds are definitely inexpensive. So I think you should just go have some fun, go grow some plants, and let me know how it goes in the comments down below. See you next time. Thank you.